On the other side of the quarter, in a stately courtyard, with a garden and waterfall, an older spider around the neck crowd presented themselves to council member Jackie Clarkson, the Tammy Faye Baker of the political set, part Elvira, part bride of Frankenstein, this weeble wobble woman shuffled through the crowd, making like a benevolent dictator, all glad handing and back handing with a friend who's grinning. In her monstrous tenure on the city council, she rid the quarter of the tap dancing kids and tried to eradicate the tarot card readers and homeless. She longed for the days of old, the stately days, the genteel ways, when the bright-eyed lords lorded over the ruby-yellow cataracts of the poor. Divert your eyes, the manor is on the move. I received an invitation to attend this meeting of the minds at this swank mini-mansion in the quarter, a few blocks off of Bourbon Street. It was time for the rich to hold their own post-Katrina strategy session over wine and cheese and the rubber band taut facial skin of those whose age shall not be mentioned. They chuckled and pursed brandy sniffers and birth bath, birth, bird bath wrists. They betrayed no urgency for change. They betrayed no desperation. No one got reared on spike punch. No one lost their shit. No one did anything in this bankrupt congregation of the assured and classically comfortable. I hit the bartender up for a double gin and tonic and moved like a shadow through the courtyard and up the stone stairs to the kitchen. The blue bloods paid me no notice. I was a gin-scented breeze. After haunting the first floor of the host's urban palace, I drifted back onto the surface of the courtyard, searching for some trace of Katrina, evidence that we were all inhabiting the same apocalyptic city. So why are you here, I asked a girl sitting in a metal chair next to the fountain. She was young, but didn't seem out of place in this marvelized collection of high society. She was fresh, her skin unblemished, but from her sensible heels to her potted plant haircut, she looked like a placeholder, a 20-something dilettante yearning for the day when she too could be plastic, 50-something harpy, rich with power and the ability to indulge herself in the self-righteous smarm of old world wisdom. She had no business being young. And then came the big moment. It was time for Queen Jackie Clarkson to hold court and address her minions. She stood atop the stone stairs in her big button skirt suit and creamed a photo op smile on her billboard face. Thank you, she bellowed, thank you. And the throngs applauded, rattling their skeletal hands together, orbital eyes bulging out of their sockets with a single-minded fervor. Please take your seats, my precious people, she said. Oh, my wonderful people, so glitzy, so bluish of blood. I want to polish your marble heads and put you all on pedestals and showroom windows so the world can truly see how New Orleans do shine. But that's not why I'm here today. I'm here to give you my promise to faithfully represent your needs and desires, to strive to keep the quarter pure for all condo owners, for now and for eternity. I promise to promulgate the lifestyle of the rich and sheltered. This is a new age for New Orleans a new opportunity to restore the quarter to the grand old Poobah days when we could safely meander down royal and charters without fear of being touched or brushed upon by the soil and southern. I promised to rid Rampart Street of the noisy boom boom clubs and replace them with origami shops and potpourri vendors. No longer shall we, the diamond-studded gods and goddesses of old New Orleans, be forced to associate with the rabble. Someone once said, Leave them, let them eat cake. But I believe if you let them eat cake, they'll only get comfortable and want something more like pies or praline. So I say, let them eat what we tell them to eat. Give them crackers one day and toenails the next. For we are the keepers of the old ways, the noble ways, the pearly white necklace ways, the true healers of New Orleans. I had placed my tape recorder on the edge of the stage to catch every syllable of Clarkson's wrong sentiments. But 20 minutes into her harangue, I decided enough was enough. No more, goddammit. I shoved my way through the butterscotch sucking masses, grabbed my recorder and headed towards the exit. I stumbled out onto the street, drunk and disgusted, and slammed the gates shut behind me. The crash spooked the blue blood crowd. Someone shouted, the heathens are attacking, protect the queen. I slung back half of my drink and threw the rest on the sidewalk. On the other side of the gate, the two older women, whose job it was to check invitations, murmured to each other, did he have an invite? I don't know, but if he did, I'd shudder for the future of New Orleans. Don't worry, Jackie has claimed for his time. I hope so, because he may be uneasy. He didn't belong here. Don't worry, Margaret. That kind, they don't last. They die young. 
They all have sex with each other, sometimes all at once. They do those drugs and drink each other's sweat. They have no future. I hope you're right, Julia, because the only hope for New Orleans lies with people like us, like Jackie. All we can hope for is that this evil younger generation dies off like they're supposed to. And from the looks of that guy, they don't have long to go. I stood in the middle of the street under the lamp's glare and found myself agreeing. Maybe those two old bags are right. And maybe, just maybe, there's more to you, Jackie, than meets the eye. Maybe it was the nine gin and tonics I had consumed. Maybe it was the Joker's wild ecstasy pill I popped. Or maybe it was the way your black and white crown of thorns exploded out of your head, forming a halo of spider webs and poison cotton candy. Whatever the reason, dear Jackie oh Jackie, I believe I have fallen in love with you. No, I don't believe. I know. At first, I tried to fight these dirty feelings. I told myself there could be no future between a drunken wretch like me and a hateful siren such as you. We come from different worlds. I'm a denizen of the low places, a self-pleasuring hedonist with an intimate knowledge of the unclean masses you hold in pure contempt. I have struggled with the logistics of crossing the chasm that separates our worldviews. You have publicly expressed your precious desire to return to the good old days, the 1950s when the French Quarter was a genteel place, a snow-white land of lords and ladies, when the only hucksters plying their trade in Jackson Square were non-threatening artists who massaged their canvases with horsehair brushes, tenderizing the final touches on pretty pictures and trees and flowers. It was a grand time when the blackies shined shoes and averted their eyes from your kind. It was a grand time when the rights of man applied only to those who carried gold in their cheeks. And I know how hard it must be for you, now that the grand times are dead, now that you and your kind are forced to meet in fortified courtyards, sipping on spirits and assuring each other that it's not too late, that there remains hope. For those people who wrap themselves around your every word, they are old and dying, a constituency of the frail, relics of the old ways. And that comforted me. I want your kind to follow the light of the moon as it breaks in the Mississippi River. Follow the light, the lazy old money slags who shield themselves from our New Orleans in million dollar condos and stately mansions. Tell them they can walk on water, and tomorrow we'll go bobbing for their classic faces in another post-disaster dawn. But I was a fool to think your disciples are limited to obscenely wealthy geriatrics. I have met their offspring and they are legion. Oh, Jackie, dear Jackie, how I hated you. But now I realize in this post-storm apocalypse, you are the light that will lead the righteous and predestined to the promised land. So I figure it's time to get on board. It's time to unite our disparate worlds for the greater good. I want to ravage you, dear Jackie. I want to cradle your butterball body in my quivering arms and rip off the clown buttons of your blade with my teeth, exposing your nude colored brassiere and the freckles on your chest that form the constellation of a for sale sign. We will lie down in a bed of promissory notes where I will tick your nipples with condemnation contracts. This feels wrong, Richard, you'll say, in that cracked voice report one of yours that has represented the eardrums of thousands of struggling souls. Shh, I'll whisper, wiping away the blood trickling out of my nose. Let's communicate with our bodies. I want to hear your bosom sing in the chorus of your inner thighs, you trollish temptress. And if I don't call you the next day, it's only because I am lying in a ball on the floor in some dark place mumbling, reliving every sweaty moment we shared. And if I don't call you the day after that, not to worry, it's only because I am afraid of my own feelings. And if I don't call you in a week, it would be because I found a marble in the street and I'm spending most of my time trying to track down this rightful owner. But don't worry, I'll eventually call because you mean the world to me. And that moment we shared was something special and will serve as an example to our ravaged city that even the worst of enemies can put aside the differences and come together in a sleazy flesh pretzel for the greater good. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't tell anybody that you smell like a hard-boiled egg. That's, that's a private thing between lovers. Sweet Jackie, dear Jackie, my high-class chicken head. Oh, Jackie. <laughs>